What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Adventure Outpost. It is another adventure day. We are ranking shit uh, this past Friday. Roland Emmerich's new disaster movie, Moonfall, came out. It was all the spectacle and nonsense that you would hope for in a disaster movie. Uh, and that got me the idea today to rank every single disaster movie that I've ever seen, including Moonfall. I finally got a chance to see it last night. So I thought today is as good as day as any to rank them all up, see where Moonfall flies. Um, now there's a lot of different um, definitions that people will use for um, a disaster movie. I've seen people lump zombie movies into disaster movies because it's technically like a plague that's ruining the earth. Um, movies like Contagion or Outbreak, which are like virus movies they've, they've used. Um, I didn't put any of those in there because to me, zombie movies is more like horror um, to me. And uh, pandemic movies now, especially in this day and age, don't seem so sci-fi-y anymore. They seem very, very um, nonfiction these days. So I, I am lumping in strictly for disaster movies, um, movies that deal with the elements in a sense. So it's really like nature um, that's going to take down people in this. So we're talking like tidal waves, um, comets twisters, uh, icebergs, um, hurricanes, earthquakes, all that good stuff. Um, so we're strictly going to stick to the elements here when we go in and rank our disaster movies. Um, but that's it. That's enough defining. Let's just jump right the fuck into it um, with the worst disaster movie I have ever seen, and that is Into the Storm. Um, this is a very sad attempt um, to make a tornado movie. Uh, it's just, it pales in comparison to a much better tornado movie that will show up on this list later. Um, it's just, it's very cheap. It, the special effects are fucking terrible in it. Uh, it's just really dumb. It's like the lowest hanging fruit for what you can do with a disaster movie. Uh, it's like one step above just being like a Sharknado, um, which those movies aren't on here because I've never seen a Sharknado. My dog is about to lose her fucking mind. Yeah. All right, <laughs> she's holding that in. Yeah, uh, I've never seen any of the Sharknado movies because I, that's just, I just can't bring myself to do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What? It's so nice out that she just can't stand being cooped up, even though the door is open so she can go sit out on the terrace and enjoy the sunshine. She still has to come running around in here. But all right, she's gone. She's back out in the terrace. Uh, next um, is one of the only the one of the only disaster movies in this that I don't have in the collection, which I need to get, um, which is the movie The Core. Um, I haven't seen it in a long time. I watched it like once back when I was in high school. Uh, I think it's about like a bunch of people that have to drill into the center of the earth to like restart the earth's core. Um, it's all the insanity that you would expect. The best part about the movie is that I remember it didn't take itself seriously at all. It was very tongue in cheek. Um, but that's really all I remember from the movie. I have to get it in this collection and watch it again because it's been um, a very, very hot minute since I have. Uh, next on the list is Pompeii. Um, I was so excited when this trailer dropped for this movie. I was like so pumped. I was like, bam, we got Jon Snow. Uh, we got the girl from Sucker Punch, uh, Keeper Sutherland, doing whatever Keeper Sutherland does. And we got fucking Echo in there. Like, I'm fucking ready for this movie. Um, and then it was about what you would expect. I wish I knew beforehand that Paul W.S. Anderson had something to do with it, because then I would have not gone in with such high expectations for this movie. Because it's about what you would expect from a Paul W.S. Anderson movie. Um, it's just the spectacle is pretty good in it, but the love story that they're trying to do, like akin to Titanic, it just misses the mark terribly. Uh, up next is a movie that I actually like enjoyed a lot in high school. And then as I watched it um, not too long ago to prep for all this, I was like, this movie is not good. And that is um, the remake Poseidon. Um, it's not terrible. I mean, Wolfgang Peterson, um, definitely no spectacle. The, the spectacle in this movie is pretty fucking good. And uh, all the actors, they did the best with what they, with what they got. Kurt Russell's great. Josh Lucas, Richard Dreyfuss. Um, Emmy Rosso, I'm like, there's a star-studded cast in this. It's just that it pales in comparison to the original. And this just falls into the lump category of so many remakes these days that it's just like, if you're not going to do anything new or interesting, why does it exist? 
I do like this lenticular cover here that's going on here with the boat being ripped by that fucking tsunami. Um, so, I mean, this movie, it's got its, it's got its moments. It's not the worst thing. All the rest of these movies that we're going through now are good. Like, there's no bad... I, I would really only... Into the Storm is really the only one that I would not want to watch again. Um, all the rest of these, to me, are good movies. It's just ranking my enjoyment of what I get out of a disaster movie. Because this next movie is probably a better made movie than some of the other disaster movies we're going to get to. But I, as a disaster movie, I just like some of the, ch the cheesier ones better. Uh, but the next one is Deep Water Horizon. Uh, and this is a really good movie. It's very solid. You actually get a solid performance out of Mark Wahlberg. Um, what's the other? Dylan O'Brien's good in it. Kurt Russell's got some moments in there. Uh, this is a really, it's just a solid movie. It's, it plays it a lot more serious than like you would get from disaster movies, which is why it scores so low here because I prefer my tongue-in-cheek disaster movies. But this movie is still, it's really freaking good. Um, up next, you want to talk about laying on the cheese. We got San Andreas. Uh, it's a very ridiculous movie about the San Andreas fault line going up and earthquakes and tidal waves and all this crazy stuff that's going on. Uh, one of the better rock movies. This was before rock really started to become very tiresome for me, at least. Um, and it's got Gina Carano that she, not Gina Carano, Gina, Carla Guagino. That's, that's a dyslexic moment right there. <laughs> Gina Carano, Carla Gugino. Uh Carla Gugino is an unsung actress. There she is right there. Um, she does not get enough credit. I feel like I fucking love her. She is great. So I was always ready for this movie. Um, it's, it's, it's solid disaster cheese right there. Um, and then we want to lay on some more disaster cheese. See, like this is a movie where I, like... Deep Water Horizon is a better movie than this movie, but if we're going for like disaster cheese, this movie is cheesy, cheesy, cheesy. And that is Volcano. Uh, this is a movie about them finding a volcano underground in LA and it erupts. Yes, that's all you need to know about that movie. Like, do you, do you need anything more? It's Tommy Lee Jones saving people in LA when a volcano erupts, sign me up. It is cheesy to the extreme. Uh, next up is another, uh, is the first of many Roland Imrich movies that are gonna land on here, and that is 2012. Um, say what you will about Roland Imrich, his movies might be very, very cheesy and never really like award-winning good, but that man knows how to entertain the shit out of you. You will never be bored with one of his movies. And his movies come out at the perfect time when you just need a movie where you just want to turn your brain off and just enjoy mayhem. This is one of those movies. It's just two and a half hours of absolute balls to the wall mayhem. Um, and it's so entertaining. And I think this is the movie that started his trend of like main characters who get divorced and then the wife gets remarried to a guy and then the new guy ends up dying in the movie for paving way for like the original family to like come back together again. It's a really weird thing. He does it in this movie. He does it in Moonfall. Uh, it's, it's, it's very bizarre. <laughs> so it's, that's, that's like a funny trope I've noticed that he's been doing in his disaster movies. But goddamn, that man knows how to entertain the shit out of you. Up next uh, is where we get to B-movie giant. Gerard Butler with Geostorm. Uh, this is another movie that is just balls to the wall, out of control. Gerard Butler is another man, much like Gerard, much like Roland Imrich. You just want someone to go to for some entertaining mayhem. Gerard Butler is your guy, um, and this movie is no different. It is it is out of control. It's got a pretty solid cast there too: Ed Harris, Andy Garcia, Abby Cornish, uh, Jim Sturgis. This is a very wildly hilarious movie. Um, I freaking love it. It's, it's great. Um, I couldn't tell you anything about the plot except that crazy shit starts happening and Gerard Butler has to save the day from space. Um, uh, I feel like that's all you need to know. Oh yeah, that's, that's why. So this is, uh, it's written and directed by Dean Devlin, who was the writing partner with Roland Imrich for movies like, um, Independence Day. I don't think he did these later movies. Yeah, no, he didn't do 2012. 
But I know he did do some 90s movies with Roland Emmerich, so the man learned from the master. Um, next up on the list is where it's fallen. Moonfall, the newest disaster movie from Roland Emmerich, lands here. Um, it is cheesy in all the best ways. It is the first half of the movie is a little slow, but it just it's just taking its time getting to once they take off into space. Uh, when they, they take off in the rocket through the gravity wave, the rest of the movie is just absolute balls to the wall insanity. And I respect the hell out of them for going as hard and as weird as they did. Um, it's just, it's super entertaining. He, he the Roland Eimerick just knows um, how, to, how to create, create spectacle. It's, the dialogue may be terrible. <laughs> the, the, the characters may be paper thin, but God damn it, man, does that man know spectacle. And it is always entertaining to watch. Next up, oh, Gerard Butler again. Roland Eimerick and Gerard Butler just trade him back and forth right now. Uh, but it is the movie Greenland. Uh, this is an uh, end-of-the-world apocalyptic movie about a big-ass comet coming to destroy the Earth. And Gerard Butler and his family have to like, get to like a safe bunker um, before the insanity happens. Um, this is a bit more restrained. This one is, is a little bit more on the serious side than most disaster movies. Um, but it, work, it works really well because the movie is just tense as shit the entire time um, as they're trying to get to this spot and their family becomes separated and they're trying to get back together to each other and trying to make it to the spot in time. It is, it's really freaking good. I enjoy this movie a lot. This was one of the, the more serious Gerard Butler movies, but it is a top-notch one. We're going all the way back into the 70s now for this next one. I believe 1974, maybe? Um, was once one of my favorite rides at Universal Studios till I got uh, got rid of it, but it was actually because of that ride at Universal Studios that I even found out about this movie and went to watch it, and that is Earthquake. Um, Charlton Heston, uh, a bunch of people in this, Richard Roundtree, Ava Gardner. Uh, this is just a movie about, uh, I think it's L.A.? Yeah, L.A. It just uh, gets a catastrophic earthquake that just levels L.A., and it's about all these people in it. Um, this just set the benchmark for practical effects work. Um, it always blew me away when we would go to the ride and they would show you some of how they did it, how they would show um, um, the, the L.A. earthquake. Uh, it's insane how they use miniatures, and that's a lost art. It blows my – I hate that we have just have become such an over-reliance on – CGI instead of just using CGI to create something that physically can't be done any other way because like you don't really see people use miniatures anymore and miniatures was such a a perfect blend where you were able to get these like awesome shots but they still looked like super realistic like I feel like today like there was one like the one thing I didn't like in Moonfall is like there was just a scene where Patrick Wilson was just pulling into um, a hotel area to like meet up with another character and not one shot of it looked real at all. And it was just a simple tracking shot. And it, it just looked horrible compared to this movie that was made 40-something years, almost 50 years before it. And it's showing absolute devastation in L.A. And it looked more real than a tracking shot of a guy pulling into a hotel. So I just feel like we need they need to figure out the balance in this CGI world. And they're not doing a great job of it right now. <laughs> um, up next, we're going to chug along, is the uh, first of this this movie and another movie that will come later. They released within like a few months of each other. Um, it always cracks me up when movies do that. Um, Volcano was another one. That movie came out that another movie we're going to get to later also came out within a few months of each other. Same type of story. Uh, but this one, while this one might probably be the more serious and better movie... The other one is still more enjoyable to me. Um, but this one is Deep Impact. Um, Star-studded cast in here. You got Elijah Wood. Um, you got Robert Duvall. Um, Tia Leone. Morgan Freeman is the fucking president. Um, there's so many people in this movie. And it is about a comet coming that's going to destroy the world. And all these people in it that have to figure out what they're going to do. Um, it's another one. That's, it's, it's a little bit more serious. Then the other comet destroying movie that will come later, that one is definitely holds on a lot more cheese, but that one is, I feel like, a bit more entertaining than this one simply because this one takes itself a little too seriously. Um, but I still think this one's really good. Still has a lot of really good effects in it. Um, the tidal wave at the end, um, when Tia, uh, spoiler alert, um, when Taylor Leone's on the beach and that huge tidal wave is coming at her, it just looks fucking really good. Um, it's a great, it's, it's, it's a great movie. 
the perfect storm um, about a fishing vessel that got stuck in this insane hurricane that went down. Um, and it, it's it's a really good it's a really good movie. We just watched it like a few weeks ago, and I was surprised like at how well it holds up. Like some of the special effects aren't so great uh, these days, but the character work in it is like really good. They got a really good set of actors to like pull this shit together. Um, it still cracks me up that like for so long all they did was just like he's Mark Wahlberg, he's from Boston, like that's just what we're gonna do. So he always just had that really fucking Boston accent in every movie because it's the only thing he can do. Um, George Clooney's good in it. Um, William Fickner, Karen Allen, uh, Mary Elizabeth uh, Mastrantonio. I know I'm pronouncing that last name wrong, but you know. Uh, John C. Riley. There's so many people in this movie. Uh, it's really freaking great. Um, it's, I, I enjoy this movie a lot. Um, it's a lot of fun. This one's another one that's a little bit more on the serious side, um, but that doesn't take away from it because it's still a really, really phenomenal uh, disaster movie. Uh, up next is a disaster movie I just saw recently, maybe like uh, two years ago, so relatively recently for me. Um, it is so great. It's written from the guy who did Speed. Um, this is an unsung movie. I don't know why this movie didn't get um, as much traction as other movies, because this is a really good action disaster movie. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It just has fucking fun with itself. It has some great freaking practical effects in it. It has some great set pieces in it. Um, and that is Hard Rain. Uh, Christian Slater, Morgan Freeman. Um, it's about a dam and like a storm is hit and this dam is being overflowed. So like the runoff is coming down into this town and it's like completely putting it underwater. And Christian Slater is, like, um, one of those garter truck guys who, like, pick up money. And in this storm, while he's pick, like, he's picking up the money and he's trying to get back to his place, Morgan Freeman and his crew show up to rob it. So they rob it during this huge monsoon storm. And then it follows as Christian Slater takes the money and hides and goes off. And they have to, like, hunt him down and get the money from him during this storm. It is every bit as ridiculous as it sounds. And it's absolutely great. So this is what I'm talking about when I like, I, I, I need my disaster movies with like a slice of cheese. Like you, it can't be too serious. Like it could be like serious ones can still be good, but they'll never be as entertaining as these ones with that are just like cheese. Cause I feel like a disaster movie inherently is just cheesy. Like I don't want my disaster movies to be too serious. Like certain ones obviously, slip through the cracks and can be really serious and fucking incredible. They, they just tow that line perfectly and they know the line. Other ones, I want as much cheese layered on there as possible. And this is one of those movies that I need that cheese. Give me the cheese. Uh, next is a great arsonist movie uh, for all you arsonist fans out there. And that is Backdraft. Uh, this is a great firefighter movie about a guy who is just setting fires across town and they're trying to like figure out who's doing it. It's a great family drama uh, with Kurt Russell and one of the Baldwins, I forget the fuck his name, going toe to toe in this movie. It is just a super entertaining firefighter movie. Um, this is another one that has some moments where it's like a little too serious at times, but it also has that nice layer of cheese on it that really makes it that perfect 90s disaster movie. Uh, this is just a phenomenal, look at that fucking steelbook too. It just looks, that's a great fucking steelbook. Love it. Uh, hold your breath, daylight. Uh, there's another one, hit that layer of cheese, baby. Um, they're in a tunnel and somebody blows up a portion of the tunnel and all these people are now stuck in the tunnel. I forget, I think it's the Holland Tunnel or some shit. It's, it's a tunnel somewhere um, in New York City where now there's water like flowing in and they gotta get out and they don't, and the only one who's gonna be able to help them is Sylvester Stallone. So now they gotta find their way to get out of this tunnel. It is so out of control, hilarious. Roland Emmerich striking again with The Day After Tomorrow. This is one of his better um, disaster movies. You know, you got Dennis Quaid, Jake Gyllenhaal, Emmy Rossum. A lot of heavy hitters in this one. This one just strikes that good balance of entertainment uh, while also having the absolutely beat it over your head, not subtle uh, political statements. Like the part at the end where they're just like, shows the Americans like hopping the border into Mexico. Like it's just so hilariously on the nose. Like I fucking love it. It cracks me up every time. 
Uh, but the the special effects in this are great. Like the tornado scene in LA is awesome. The fucking uh, huge water tsunami that comes through New York City is great. That whole scene with it and everything. Um, there's a lot of really good moments in this movie. Um, boistered by a great Dennis Quaid performance because that man always brings the heat. Uh, it's a great fucking movie. Uh, we talked about they released Volcano before, and then there was another one a few months later, which is the better one. Uh, layers on that cheese, but is also super entertaining and very wild, and that is Dante's Peak. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, Linda Hamilton, um, about a dormant volcano that starts to produce activity again. They go and check it out, and this insane volcano happens in this area, and they have to try and get out of there and protect everybody and the families. It is it is wildly entertaining. It is a great fucking movie. Um, I love Dante Speak. I could always watch this whenever this movie's on. The scene where, like, the grandma hops out into the water and starts pushing the canoe the rest of the way, and she's just, like, boiling to death because the water's, like, scalding hot is, like, one of the most wild scenes. It's so over-the-top and hilarious, and I, I love it. Um, next up is another old movie. This one is probably one of the more serious um, of the disaster movies, but it worked really well for itself. It even scored 10 Academy Award nominations, which is fucking wild for these, including Best Picture. This was a, I think there's only two disaster movies in here that were up for Best Picture. This is one of them, um, and it is Airport. came out back, I think, in, like, the 70s, um, and it's literally just, like, it's like an ensemble movie all about an airport um, and a plane that took off, and somebody on the plane has a bomb, and it's about the people in the tower back in the airport, and the people on the plane, and everyone trying to work together to figure out how to get this plane back down safely without anything crazy going on. It is a, it is a wildly good movie. It is really good. Better than it has any right being. Um, super entertaining. This is one of those movies that knew how to toe the line between being um, serious, um, yet also being a really good fucking disaster movie. Uh, it is top notch. Definitely check this one out. We're chugging along. Like we said before, Deep Impact was the lesser of the other movie that came out a few months later or earlier, or however they were released, and that is Armageddon. I know what people are saying, Armageddon, man, really? This movie is cheesy as shit. You're goddamn right it is, and that's why it's all the way up here, because it is super fucking entertaining. And I dare anybody who doesn't enjoy watching movies and getting swept up in movies who doesn't start to tear up at the end of this movie when Liv Tyler has to say goodbye, spoiler alert, to her father... Um, when he elects to stay behind and detonate the explosion to break up the comet to save the world. Uh, gets me every time. Every fucking time. Um, elsewhere, all the supporting characters are hilarious. You have Ben Affleck, Michael Clark Duncan, Steve Buscemi. Um, there's just so many wild people in this movie. Uh, Steve Buscemi, when he starts to get the space sickness and he starts going nuts, is, is wild. This movie is just so much fun. Uh, and I didn't realize how much I enjoyed it until later in life and I looked at who the writer was and one of them was J.J. Abrams. I was like, what the fuck? Like, that's hilarious. Uh, so now I know why I enjoy this movie so much because J.J. Abrams, uh, he gets me sometimes. Not so much with the Star Wars, but everything else, Super 8, this, he, he, knows, he knows my jam. He knows my flavors. We saw the remake before, but now the original pops up in the number four spot. And that is The Poseidon Adventure. This is another really great fucking movie. There's another one that knows how to toe the line on being super serious, but a really good fucking disaster movie. Uh, genus, genus, Gene Hackman, Ernest Borgnine, uh, a lot of great fucking actors in this movie. Roddy McDowell. Um, this movie is just super fucking entertaining, and the practical effect works in it is freaking phenomenal. Uh, this is a really good, enjoyable movie. I enjoy the hell out of it. I could watch it all the time. Um, I remember watching it for the first time um, when I was in high school. I was supposed to have gone to bed like two hours before, but I just I couldn't sleep, so I put on a movie in my room, um, and this was the one that I chose. And I stayed up. I think I watched it till like 3 a.m., and it was just like, this movie's so fucking good. This movie was so worth not getting sleep before school for. Uh, it is freaking great. Um, in the number three spot is another movie that really knows how to toe the line for being a really good disaster movie, but also a super serious movie. Uh, it's a movie that will get you emotionally at the end every time. It is so freaking good, and that is The Impossible. Um, it's a movie about the tsunami that struck, I think, like Thailand. Yeah, I think it was like Thailand. Um, and this family that was on vacation when the tsunami hits and it's all about them trying to reconnect and find each other in the after in the aftermath of the brutality of the storm and all the death and everything um it is such a good fucking movie ewan mcgregor there's a scene where he has to call home and explain to them like what's going on and who he's looking for and everything and he like breaks down during the phone call it is 
phenomenal fucking acting right there. Um, Tom Holland, another one. I didn't even know who he was the first time I saw this movie, but I was like, dude, that fucking kid is ripping it in this movie. Um, he fucking crushes it. Naomi Watts crushes it. Everyone in this movie just brings their A-game. This is a great fucking disaster movie, and you absolutely should watch it. Um, in the number two spot, one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, I think it's in my top 25 of all time. It's a movie that I can watch any time it's on. I literally just went down to Florida last week. On the way down, I watched this movie. And on the way back up, I watched this movie. That's how much I love this movie and how often I could watch it and still enjoy it. It's one of those movies that like you watch it all the way through. You love it. It ends. You could put it right back on and still enjoy it as if you were watching it for the first time. And for me, it's Twister. Uh, I, I, love, I grew up with this movie. I love this movie. I grew up with The Ride. I fucking love The Ride. Um, this has always been one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's insanely quotable between me, my brother, my dad, my friends. We quote this movie all the time. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Everything Philip Seymour Hoffman says in this movie is hilarious. The suck zone. Food. Just is he's phenomenal in this. Bill Paxson, especially, the fucking king, man. Rest in peace, my man Bill. He's amazing. Helen Hunt's great. Everyone in this movie is great. There's so many side characters that you see pop up in so much other stuff. Like the dude from Ferris Bueller is in this movie. Fucking Daniel Faraday from Lost is in this movie. Like uh, Carrie Elway's. Uh, he's, there's so many people in this movie. This movie is so fucking phenomenal. Written by one of my favorite writers, Michael Crichton. Uh, it's this, I love this movie. The practical effect work in this movie is amazing. The special effect work in this movie is amazing. Um, the insanity that they went through filming this movie in Tornado Alley is absurd to me. Every, I love everything about this movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, but there can only be one. And there is one that I like as a disaster movie just a little bit more than Twister. It is one of the greatest movies of all time. It's one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Um, we talked before how Airport was one of two movies to be nominated for Best Picture that was a des disaster movie. This one is the other one. It should come to no surprise as anybody. It's Titanic. Probably the best disaster movie ever made. Um, winner of 11 Academy Awards. It won Best Picture. I think it's probably the only disaster movie that will ever win Best Picture. It just struck that perfect tone of being this epic romance movie um, set against the backdrop of this insanely terrible event, um, this terrible disaster that happened, strike, striking the iceberg, going down. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a freaking insanely great movie um, with the first half just being this epic romance about um, the value of money and how money is and everything and how it can be uh, a crutch and a chain just as much as it could be beneficial. And it was this woman trying to escape that life of luxury that was slowly suffocating her and finding it in this guy, this poor dude who has nothing but enjoyment of his life. He has nothing but respect for the world and life that he lives and he just enjoys every moment. And right as they finally get together, we just hit them with this insane, freaking disaster movie for the second half of the movie. Everything in the second half of that movie, once that ship starts going down, is just balls to the wall, intense. James Cameron is an absolute master man. Master man. I can't fucking talk for the life of me. Is an absolute mastermind. This man can do no wrong. He is fucking incredible. I. It's this movie. One of my favorite, it's always been one of my favorite movies. I've loved it ever since I was a kid and you had to watch it on the dual double VHS tapes that it came with. Uh, this was always one of my favorite movies. It is phenomenal. One of the best disaster movies ever made, bar none. There will probably never be a disaster movie like this ever again. And that's the list. That is uh, an insane collection of cheesy disaster movies coupled with uh, a couple of really good, serious disaster movies in there. Um, I love the disaster genre. I, I can watch really good, serious ones. I can watch the really shitty, cheesy ones. Um, I, I steer clear of the sci-fi cheesy ones, the ones that you'll see on like the sci-fi channel, like Sharknado and all those like dumbass ones, um, just because like that is just... That I gotta draw the line somewhere. Um, but these theatrical, theatrically released 
movies, uh, your cheesy ones, your over the top ones, your serious ones. Your, I, I can watch all of them. I love a disaster movie. Uh, I'm always down for a disaster movie. It's a shame Moonfall Bomb is bombing right now at the box office. Um, cause the way that the movie ends up, the whole third act is absolutely insane. Um, if you like disaster movies, go watch it give it, give it, give it its due, give it a chance. Um, cause while, yeah, it's not the best movie around, but it's a great movie to turn your brain off and just escape from the real world for a little while. And we need movies like that now more than ever. And I also want Moonfall too, and I'm not getting it unless you guys get out there and I'll see it. So get your ass out there, go see Moonfall. And then go watch any of these disaster movies that you haven't seen. Um, but that's it. That's for me. Um, let it down in the comments what your favorite disaster movies are, what you got, what you love, um, and all that other good stuff. If you don't, that's cool too. I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> that's how we do it. Um, until the next video, you've been you. I've been me. These have been movies. And uh, go adventure on. Go on. Get out. Go watch Moonfall. Get out there. Be gone.